I went there to be a songwriter. First thing I found out that I was a New Yorker. The minute I landed, I felt like I'm a New Yorker. I belong here, and I really did. I felt like I, I was home, and, and it felt like home. What was accessible to me in New York that had never been before was like I could just uh, go out every night and find other songwriters and listen to them and uh, you know learn from them, and that was really fantastic <laughs> well because I found out er I wasn't getting any gigs and I wasn't getting anywhere in New York when I first got there I kept going to the open mics and just failing so I asked one of the people in charge why am I not getting to the next level and he said oh you really want to know and I said yeah and he goes well your songwriting sucks your voice sucks and your stage presence sucks. I was devastated. You know, that summarizes the whole music business. But I had something inside of me that wanted to show him that I knew that I could write songs. May and I, I would learn the other parts. But I knew that I could write songs and I went home and wrote a song and it got me to the next level. That gave me a lot of confidence that I could write under that kind of duress, I think. And after that, I started writing songs quite quite often that I felt were coming from me now and not, you know, when I moved there and I wasn't getting any gigs, it was because I was trying to sound like other artists. I think I found my voice in its entirety while I lived there and once, and once I, I turned down a, there was a rather major artist management that funded a, a demo for me. And once I, I, I said to them, I said, look, I'm giving you guys three months to get me a deal. Or I'm, I'm moving because I'm just not getting anywhere here. And they never got me a deal, but I knew that I found my voice and, and I found myself. So, I mean, some of the songs, I, I, when I moved to Austin, I didn't, I didn't start performing the songs I was in New York. I didn't even tell people I moved there from New York. No one knew, actually. They just wondered where I came from. They were kind of confused by this guy that suddenly showed up in the music scene in Austin who's, you know, like where where is he from and that kind of thing but but I didn't want to start out saying hey I'm from New York you should give me a gig I just couldn't do that so pretty early on I mean I was so I had no experience believe me I maybe had five shows that I've done before I moved to New York and I was nervous about getting, I have terrible stage fright and I still do, which is fine, but I didn't know how to use it. This song I wrote was a song that, was the first song I recognized my own voice on. Like I had, I had sacrificed a whole, my friends were going away out to the country, it was Labor Day and they wanted me to go hiking or camping with them and I said, no, I'm gonna stay here. I have to write a song for this. I was part of this songwriter group, uh, the Cornelia Street Songwriter Exchange, and I thought, man, I gotta write a song for that, for that group. So I stayed in, and I worked and worked and worked, and I finally heard my own voice in a song. And I was like, wow, I wrote a song. It's Michael Fracasso's song. So I went and. And I think I got immediate recognition from that song. Uh, people in that circle, like I know that they got it and really were like ha happy for me, I think. Uh, then we recorded it on a record. It was part of that same Cornelia Street Songwriter Exchange. And uh, then the jealousy started. <laughs> And uh, it was interesting, you know, I got a, a review in Variety that point, you know, the record got reviewed in Variety, but I was 
one of two people that they mentioned in the review. So, you know, I, I started feeling like a sort of cold shoulder from a lot of the folk people that I was in the same group with, you know. There, there are a few of them actually that made it. Like I said, I didn't show up with these. I didn't play these songs when I got there. There's a motor vehicle moving down the line. There's a motor vehicle ignoring all the signs. Watch each step you take There's a man with 21 faces Crawling like a snake There's a missing gentleman, sir Trying to make a pass There's a missing gentleman, sir up real fast, look out, baby. Careful where you walk. There's a man with 21 faces. This time he's a local car. I read this article in the paper about this Japanese organization, or I don't know if it might have been one guy, but he was putting 
arsenic or poison in candy boxes to to take down this candy company in Japan and he he would sign his letters man with 21 faces based on a comic book in Japan and i i found that you know when i listen to it now it's very you know not that those people never existed but it's very much what the feel of today's America, like there's just this sort of sinister people out there that we don't know about. When I wrote that, that again, that was in New York, and I, uh, I used to take my guitar, I was on the fourth floor and I'd go to the sixth floor, going up to the roof, so I'd sit up there on, basically on the way out to the rooftop, and there was this perfect echo in that section of the uh, on the roof there and um so I'd sit there and play all the time uh I I don't know you know like I I I kind of put it off as a one off I I never I never referred to it again I never played it really with my bands in New York at all like I never that wasn't part of a set list in New York although I wrote it there I um like I said I I didn't know I didn't know really what to make of it. I didn't think that much of the song and then uh, actually when I had moved to Austin a friend of mine who had come to visit me in New York had had made a video of me doing that song in the stairwell actually and uh he sent it to me and I'm like wow the song is good. Why well, I don't know why I never played it, you know, so I I like performing it because it's I like that idiom like it's kind of blues but it's off of the off of the blues kind of you know format or formula I guess. I'm really proud of it. I I am. I I. Here's the thing, I like I can play these songs from the beginning of my career, when I found Michael Fracasso, that is, that's the beginning of my career, to now and never feel tired of them, you know, and that to me is great. Like I, I can do three hours of my stuff and never feel like I've really am like dreading a particular song or anything like that. If, if I accomplished anything, it's that.